Bye Bye Kitty, Between Heaven and Hell in Contemporary Japanese Art is Japan Society's newest killer show curated by David Elliott and it features 16 cutting edge artists all under the age of 46 save for Yoshitomo Nara and we have installation, video, painting, photography, sculpture, absolutely everything represented and a lot of the recent press has been discussing the prescience of the exhibition given the recent tragic events in Japan, but at the same time you can also appreciate it outside that weighty context for just the sheer beauty in this show. This is Ash Color Mountains, Makoto Aida's 23 foot long masterpiece and there's two little uh, changes to the piece that the artist made when he came to Japan Society to put some finishing touches on it. This is not in the catalog and you'd only know it if you're sort of on the inside track. The first is Pixar's Wally, who is nestled right among the uh, remains of these dead salary men. Uh, Makoto Aida's commentary on the decay of Japanese corporate culture. And the second guy, known for hiding, is Waldo, right over here, who I found out the Japanese and the British call Wally, so two Wallies. This is Chihana Shiota's Dialogue with Absence, one of my favorite pieces in the show, and probably the most full of life, literally. Um, this is not blood, it's red food coloring and water. And can't help but think about the commentary it's making on marriage, which either you can interpret as being the lifeblood of society, or something that drains the very life from you. And I guess that's up to the visitor to decide, but this is an excellent piece. And this is actually one of the few pieces in the show that makes sound as the blood pumps through the dress. This is Kohei Nao's Pixel Deer number 24, and it was made specifically for this exhibition and took quite a lot of maneuvering to get it here from the artist Osaka Studio. It took a huge team of guys who had to take off the antlers, they were shipped separately, in order to get him out of the crate, into the building, up in the elevator, and wheeled right around to the platform where you see it is now. He is 391 pounds, a Shika deer, and was killed in Hokkaido last year. Video artist Haraki Sawa's work has a real languid, molasses, slow quality to some of it, with meditative music done by his partner, Dale Burning. Um, this piece is the first time I've ever been creeped out by a rocking horse, and if you see it, you'll know why. Um, it's called Within, and it's on a constant loop, so you can come in, sit on the floor, take a little nap. It's very soothing in a frightening sort of way. And his other piece, which is equally frightening, but seems sort of benign, is Elsewhere, which shows a lot of little anthropomorphic kitchen items running around on two legs. Tomoko Shioyasu's Vortex has been a major favorite in this show. The opening night, everyone I knew that came decided this was their absolute favorite. Um, she made it by hand over five months using no stencils, just exacto knife, soldering iron, no tracing whatsoever. And in another video where we interview the artist, she describes her arduous process of cutting out each of these incisions by hand and going with her mother on a bike with this piece rolled up down to the community center to unfurl it and do her work. Haruka Kojin's Reflect 2 was originally made in 2006, but she revived it for Bye Bye Kitty. 
in our interview with her, she talks about how mirror images and inverted images make her feel sick inside. And so that seems to be some of the impetus to do what she's done here and showing these two reflected images right next to each other, connected in the middle by this little green piece right here. This is an incredible, incredibly beautiful show, um, really well put together. Um, some of the most amazing pieces of artwork that I've seen in a very long time. An obsessive attention to detail, and I was happy to find that. We love the cutout um, on the wall. Yeah. 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 Just stared at it for probably a good 20 minutes. Walking through the entire exhibition, I had chills, and I felt like I could relate, and it was wonderful to see the traditional Japanese art and how they took it and brought it into the contemporary world and then made it their own and made it so powerful. And again, everyone must see this exhibition.